Good morning. Welcome to worship on Sunday, May 17th. 17th. Thank you for keeping. Oh, it's set in my happy set in my to those of you who are of the Scandinavian descent. So, yeah, Norwegian especially. Uh, nice rainy day. We needed that rain, so it's a good thing, and it's a good day to just be cuddled up. Hopefully, you're under a blanket with a cup of coffee or tea or something and uh, ready to worship with us. We are glad to be here with you. We'd be much happier if you were here with us, but we are still very glad that you are worshiping with us this morning. So welcome to worship, but welcome as well to those of you who are tuning in at a later time. We appreciate that as well. So always glad to have you no matter what time of the day it might be. Uh, a reminder, we are grateful for your ongoing offerings. Very grateful for that. So thank you for continuing to support the ministry and the work of this Congregation Messiah Lutheran. Uh, you can go out to our website and uh, do a offering right through that. Um, if you're interested in online giving as well, you'll have information about that out there. You also can mail something in or uh, drop it off. We are usually here during the week, so just knock on the door and say hello to us. Speaking of dropping things off, when we left our worship, in person in the middle of March, we were in the middle of food share month and had been collecting. And if you go back out on Facebook, you'll remember across the front of the church, we were developing quite the pile. Well, we took all those things, of course, to the food shelves and uh, got them out and decided, you know what, maybe we should finish that food drive, even though it got interrupted. And so now it's the middle of May. And so we invite you, as you are doing shopping here in the next couple of weeks, to buy some extra items. You should have gotten some information about that if you get our weekly email. And uh, you are free to drop those items off here during the week. Uh, we'll have our front entry on the east side of the church building open right there. You can drop, out, drop it off. And uh, if you want to say hello to us from a distance, you certainly can. If the weather gets to be nice, we've talked about even just putting a table outside for you as well. But we invite you to drop off food and we will continue to collect the food shelf, of course, will need any kind of items, uh, particularly personal care items, children's um, diapers, those kinds of things. So whatever you are able to help us uh, contribute to the area of food shelves, that would be great. And we will continue that now, between now and the end of May. Stay tuned as well is the other thing I wanted to just say this morning as we look at what may or may not be changing in terms of how we gather and worship. You know things are starting to open up, not worship yet. It's a, a place where a large number of people gather and that's still not a safe activity for all of us. But we are looking at perhaps a parking lot worship at the end of the month and uh, maybe some smaller driveway worship in your own home. Again, I invite you to go back to the May newsletter. If you're interested in helping with us with that, let us know. But just stay tuned is the message I want to give you today as we see what develops here in the next couple of weeks. All right, I think that was it for my announcement. So we begin worship this morning. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin and whose mercy endures forever. Amen. We continue with a song.
Please pray with me. Almighty and ever-living God, you hold together all things in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, receive the prayers of all your children and give to all the world the spirit of your truth and peace through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This morning, we're going to be doing an interactive reading, uh, Pastor Janet and myself, and uh, we have uh, got our sound and production guy, my husband Steve, <laughs> helping us with this this morning as well. So we invite you to follow along. You know, I really like Easter, the resurrection, new life, all that stuff. It really makes me very happy inside. I wish those feelings could last all the time, but now life is beginning to settle back to what it was. Lots of junk and problems. Sometimes it feels like Jesus gave us a good message, then vanished, leaving us without anyone. Do not fear. I am not leaving you orphaned. In your hearts and your minds, you will remember all the words that we shared together. I'm asking the Father to send to you an advocate, one who will stand with you, guide your steps, support you in all that you do. But it won't be the same as having you with us, Jesus. See what I mean? Things are going to get tougher now. I just knew it. I don't know about you, but I'm going to wait eagerly for the spirit that he promises. Remember to keep the commandments of love that I have given to you. Love one another and love God. For that, rest all the law and the prophets. Do not be afraid to let love and hope rule your lives. Place your lives in trust with me. I want to believe and I want to trust in you, O Christ, but I am afraid. Help my unbelief. Help clear away this cloud of doubt, Lord. I'm frightened of the darkness that I had known so well. I need the brightness of your love. Reach out to me, Lord, with peace and love, so that I may reach out to others in your name. Place your trust in me. Love is being poured over you. Live in that love all the days of your life. Amen. Our gospel reading today is from the 14th chapter of John. Jesus said to the disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides in you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I live in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Hello. Earlier this week, uh, on Wednesday during devotions, I shared a little bit about my mother with you. Yesterday was her birthday, and if she was still with us, she would have been 87. My mom, Jane, died on my younger sister's birthday, July 19th, almost 10 years ago. I really miss her, and of course, I have lots of fond memories of her, and I've always regretted that I wasn't able to be there with her when she died. I was scheduled to fly to Houston, Texas, uh, within days of her death, but it was too late to see her alive, to be with her just one more time. When Mama died, I wondered, now what? How can I keep going when it hurts so bad and when I miss her so much? Yes, time helps, but now, even 10 years later, it doesn't take much to be right back in the middle of that grief and that sadness. Perhaps you know about this kind of sadness, how it feels when you lose someone that you love so very much. I can't even begin to understand the grief that many people are experiencing today, especially with 
or as a result of this ongoing isolation uh, caused by COVID-19. I'm grateful for frontline workers who are present to and caring for the sick and the dying, and how sad and difficult for the families of those who long to be physically present with their loved ones. In our gospel reading today, Jesus and his disciples are together, and it's the night of his arrest, the night before Jesus is going to be put to death. And Jesus has been telling his disciples that he's leaving, he's going away. Jesus knows that he's dying, or that he will be dying, and that he's leaving his closest friends and followers. Jesus knows that his disciples will feel like orphans, that they will feel lost and alone without him. His death will leave them afraid, feeling abandoned, and without hope. In verses 18 and 19, Jesus tells the disciples, I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. And because I live, you also will live. In biblical times, being an orphan meant you really didn't belong anywhere or to anyone. Even if you were taken in by a family, you were still a second class member of that family in every way. Often orphans were forced to beg in the streets and defend for themselves. The Easter message for us is that life rather than death has the final word. Is it possible in grief situations that perhaps the bigger question under the surface is how will I be able to keep going, to live in the face of death? Could it be more about that anticipated grief on our, of our own death, assuring someone that their deceased loved one is in good hands and will be raised to life again isn't worth much, unless it's accompanied by a word of assurance that they too will find new life on the other side of overwhelming grief and sadness. When someone asks, asks, what's become of my loved one? Maybe what they're really asking is, what's to become of me in the days ahead? How can I have life without the one I love? The Easter message is that God's word in Christ Jesus is the final word, the word that sustains us in the midst of our living and our dying. It doesn't remove death as a reality for us. It overcomes death. It takes away the sting of death. You will not be orphaned. I am coming to you. And because I live, you also will live. This is a powerful statement and promise. Jesus' promise goes way beyond just the temporary feeling of loss and being alone, but it addresses once and for all that primal terror of being totally abandoned, of not belonging. Jesus' promise to his disciples was that in his own death, he would not leave them orphaned. Jesus was saying that they would always have divine parentage in God. Whether or not they belonged anywhere on earth, they would always belong to their Father in heaven. I, several years ago, got this little thing, and it says, being a family means you are part of something wonderful. It means you will love and be loved for the rest of your life, no matter what. I'm going to leave it right here. Because I think if maybe we would just change the words to being baptized means you are part of something wonderful. It means you will love and be loved for the rest of your life, no matter what. In John's gospel, faith is a relationship with a living being. There, for there to be authentic faith in Jesus, people have to be able to relate to the living Jesus, a Jesus who's not absent but present. In verse 16, Jesus says, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. When we think of an advocate, we often think of someone who'll fight for us or who'll stand up for us, maybe in the legal system, maybe in a healthcare situation, or even in a school setting. When we read this in the Gospel of John, we might be led to believe that the Spirit is the advocate who brings up our case 
before God, hoping that God will do something merciful for us. But actually, the direction is just the opposite. You see, God has already given the gift of love through death and resurrection of Jesus. And that love is what creates genuine life. The Spirit is the advocate who brings the truth of that love and life to people in this time after Easter. And that is what makes faith possible. The Spirit continues Jesus' work without taking Jesus' place. As the Word made flesh, Jesus reveals God through the life he lives and in the death he dies. But the Spirit does not become incarnate and is not crucified for the sin of the world. As after Jesus returns to the Father, the Spirit remained with the disciples and is still with us today. The Spirit continues to disclose the truth about Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. The Spirit discloses the presence of the risen Christ and his Father to the community of believers, to us. When we are in the midst of grief, whether it's a loved one's illness or death, maybe a friend moves away, maybe you're going through a divorce or a rough patch in a marriage, You've lost a job or some income or even this pandemic. Whenever we find it hard to find life after a death, we need others to speak words of assurance to us and sometimes even for us. Sometimes the words of music in a hymn get to me. They provoke me a little bit and tears might take me over. Like when I tried to sing Holy, Holy, Holy earlier this week. That was my mom's favorite hymn. Even when I can't keep singing, that's precisely when I can count on the family of God, our family, with the Spirit, to continue to sing for me on my behalf. The church is here to sing on your behalf, particularly when it's tough for you to carry your voice or to, to find your voice or when your grief is so strong you need others to help carry you through. People of God, be assured that the Holy Spirit is with us and is guiding us, especially through these unusual times during the COVID-19. Trust that the Holy Spirit is on the move, in, around, and through us. The Holy Spirit is leading this church, here and now, to bear witness that by the grace of God and Jesus Christ, there are no orphans in the kingdom of God. We are here today as the church so that we may live our lives and die our deaths in the full faith and knowledge that we are not orphans, but that we belong. We are given the courage and joy to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ to each other and to the world. With the Holy Spirit, we reveal to others the life-giving and redeeming word of God who promises us our valued place in the family forever. I'm just going to end with this. Being baptized into the family of God means you are part of something wonderful. It means you will love and be loved for the rest of your life, no matter what. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Abiding God, you have revealed yourself to us in the form of your Son, Jesus Christ. Embolden your church as your followers 
to reveal your love to everyone in our speaking and in our living. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are the creator of heaven and earth. Revitalize the health of oceans, rivers, lakes, springs, glaciers, and other bodies of water that give life to your creatures. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You call all people of the world your children. Judge the nations justly. Show mercy to the oppressed and speak truth to power through your prophets. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You come near to us when we are lost and you hear our distress. We pray for those who suffer in any way. Today, we pray as our church family, especially for Darren, Ben, and Jan, for Brandy, Cheech, Craig, and Dave, for Earl and Gary, for Greg, Jackie, Jess, and Judy, for Catherine, Milo, Patrice, and Rosie, and for those struggling with the effects of COVID-19. Paul, Mark, and Kathy. We pray as well for others we now name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your commands are good and merciful. Give us courage to take hold of our baptismal promises to work for justice, advocate for the voiceless, and free the oppressed and imprisoned in body, mind, or spirit. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. You remain with us always, O God, and your kingdom has no end. We remember the saints who have gone before us. Unite us forever in your final victory over death. Today we remember especially the family of Jan Tonneson. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Receive the benediction. Wherever we are, we are in God. Wherever we are, we are in Christ, and Christ is in us. Wherever we are, the Spirit abides with us and in us. Go forth in peace and hope, upheld by God in every way. Let us all go forth in faithfulness and trust that all may see the divine in and through us. Amen. The God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen. Have a wonderful day.